Hey, my name is Tali Keta. Uh, I'm just coming from German in Hamburg. Now just arrived in Banjul International Airport. Yeah, for so long I haven't been to Gambia for nine years. Uh, didn't come to this country. Yeah, and I'm very happy to meet my family. Yeah, but at, at the same time I'm really sad to meet the family of Yaya Jabi. He he came he, for me. I came alive to Gambia here, but for him. It was his dead body, and they buried him here in Gambia. Here, and I'm, feel, I'm feeling sad. I have to lie to them that uh, because uh, he died in a prison. He was arrested in Hamburg. And they say that he committed suicide. We try to find out the way why he died. Why? Wow! Wow! What is? What was the reason? Because we didn't know how. Any information that he was sick and then he was having any mental problem, no depression, nothing like that. He was mentally fit, young, good looking black boy. We didn't believe and we will never believe. We don't believe that Yaya committed suicide. And these lies is pushing me to be a liar also to the family. They didn't really know that he was died in the, in, in the prison. Mr. Tali, it's your legal duty to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. I swear to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Mr. Tali, you are here to raise your voice for those of our people who are silenced. Many people lost their life while they are struggling for European dream. A'udhu billahi mina shaitani rahim. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We have lost so much of our brothers on this way. Our brothers, our sisters, our uncles, so many little kids who have been lost their life. And then it's unaccountable number of people who have lost this, their life on this dangerous journey. Not only in the Mediterranean scene. I think today youths, the kids, all of them, the people, they talk about more about the Mediterranean Sea, but not only that. Many people lost their life. More people lost their life in the Sahara Desert than the people who lost their life in the Mediterranean Sea. But also when you look at the Spain and Morocco border, many people lost their lives. So it's really a sorrow for us, the black people and the African people. And then also when we came here into Europe, still now, the prison in Italy, the prison in Switzerland, the prison here in Germany, how many youths have died in the prison here? How many youths, how many young people have been died, sought by the police? We say their names, Uri Jallo, Laya Konde, Afchidi John, Yaya Jabi, Maria Masar, John Amadou, and many, many more to count. And Selu Haidara. Selu Haidara was in the prison in Mannheim. He was in the prison less than one month. So he was just there in the prison and died, and then they took him and buried him without letting the family know about this. So this happened to a lot of people, and then the family they didn't know about this. So, and then we go to the case of um, Laya Conde. He was arrested, and then they the police, they suspect him having swallow cocaine or I don't know whatever. And then they gave him a drug, this emetic drugs. And then he swallowed this drug to bring out something. And that, this led him to death. He couldn't survive from that, that drug. And this drug was given by the doctor, in a German professional doctor who knows about the body. You know how German doctors are. are. And they know the danger of this drug. 
but they ignore everything. They know what will happen to this guy. And Achidi John was also the same thing in Hamburg here, in this state that we are. This was exactly happened to him in the police. He was controlled by the police, and then they expect something like this. They called the professional doctor, German professional doctor, and gave him this drug. And then he also had to vomit, vomit until he died. And one brother from Nigeria, neighbor in West African country, was near like the way they need George, George Floyd because it's America, no, so many people know. But a brother in Nigeria also was kneeled to death with a cough. And so many prison numbers you see in the internet, people die in Switzerland also. Like me, my brother from Gambia was also arrested in Switzerland because of face recognition without looking any document. They just say, we are looking for somebody and you look like without checking his document. And he was put to custody on cell number 148, and it is always on my mind, is where he died, in Switzerland, in Lausanne. So because of face recognition, they took him to custody, and he died, and they say, they just miss, because they don't even look at the document, and he was not the right person, and he was having health problem without taking him to the doctor, and they locked him to prison, and he died and it's a big loss to Africa. The police is trying to protect the people. The white Germans feel safe when they see an officer. Do you feel protected by police too? For me, I always get scared when I see the German police. Because he, the racist control is all over the places, you know. It's clear to everyone that there's this racist control in Europe here, and it's normal life here. If there is no racist control, Yaya would have been with us today because he was controlled in the normal day and in the weekend in Riverbank here in Hamburg when the racist control patrol was going on. He was controlled in the crowd of the white people and when he was controlled and then he was checked up and then he was stopped, it's not like he, he was dealing or what, because that what they say, the street, the people in the street, and you know, it's black people, that is the image. He was just being controlled because he's black. And then when they control him, so they, they found 1.5 gram of marijuana. So I know this amount after his death, because in their statement, it was there, he, he had 1.5 gram of marijuana that led him into the police custody. So as a normal day, the white people, they are having different kind of drug. I don't know how the names of all those drugs in the techno party that they took. So all those people, they have been to party, but they were not in the, in, the, in, in the jail or something else because those people, they even have more, more, more drugs with them. We are the ones who are going to prison for that reason, you know, because the system is built in that way. They try to stop us on the way to the Europe, to come to Europe. And then when we are here also, they try to build something so that we can, they can catch us and put us in the prison. That's how, where we are belong to. So it's normal life in Europe here. And also when they talk about the black people with drugs, people think that we are having container of drugs. We are having the kilos of drugs. And the funniest thing is in prison, when a white man asks you, why are you here? You tell him I'm here for one gram of marijuana. They will just call all the white people and they call you black man, come. You say, why are you here? You say one gram, they laugh and laugh until you get angry and you ask why, you say, I'm sorry because you are just a black man, but I, white man, will never go to jail because of five gram marijuana, and they will laugh at you. Did the authority try to investigate or did anyone take responsibility? It's been clear by some of them having murder by the police. Like in the case of Uri Jallo, the hand was tied, the legs were tied on the bed, 
and the fire was on the body, how he light the fire. And also, the people also with the, who are given big by this thing, and also these doctors, they still have not been guilty, and the police have not been guilty. They already know the truth. Everyone knows the truth. They put their system to teach us Africans about humanity, but it's a fake. It's all fake. And also, in the case of Yaya Jabi, they say that he, he was suffocated to death. So, which is also very sad for the family to hear something like this. How did Yaya's family and friend react on the loss? He was very loved by the people in our community, in our village. And also, all the neighbors really loved him. And then, he was also a very hard-working someone. And that's why his death really touched the family and also the neighbor. And when we, they, they couldn't really, really, really believe that he had suddenly died like that. And also, my biggest regret, regret to his mom was that I didn't tell his mom the truth, how he died, because we all know how the mother and the child is. So that's why I couldn't really tell him the reason of the death. So I just, I just told him that he, he was died in a stomach ache, which took him two days and then he died. So, yeah, so we die, to die in a certificated like, way like this as your child, it doesn't fit you as a parent. My evidence is finished. Thank you very much, Mr. Talikata, for your wonderful contribution to this court. We heard your testimony, and we feel very sorry about your brother. So we now, we, Af we the Africans also, we now know what's going on here. So what we think Europe is in terms of law, human rights, and all those things, we now came to know that these things, when it comes to Africans, it doesn't apply to us. Human rights, rule of law, it doesn't apply to us. So thank you for your very good information that you gave to this court. We appreciate your effort. Thank you so much, Mr. Tali.